I'm gonna take you through your foot and hand release that we recommend doing every single day. What you need for this release technique is your mind-body mat, you can pop on your Nebosa splay if you would like, and of course, the Neural Ball. We're gonna start with our feet and then work our way to our hands. So grab your Neural Ball, we're gonna place it on the floor to open it up, place the seam facing straight up, put your heel on that seam and push straight down you're going to see that the neural ball splits open. For now, we're going to take out the rad micro, put that to the side, and we're going to place both of the domes onto the floor. Now, the placement of them is going to be approximately shoulder width apart. I'm gonna have you start by placing your body weight on the heel. Now, this is going to be position number one. As I stand here with it on my heel, I want you to relax your body weight. You can control how much pressure you are placing on both of the Nero domes. Now, if this is too much for you, I'm going to have you take one foot off and you're just going to release one foot at a time. If you feel comfortable, we'll place both feet onto the Nero domes. So we're sitting here for approximately 30 seconds and then let's go to our position number two. I'm gonna have you move your foot back so that the neurodome is in the center of your arch. If you are doing both feet at the same time, you're going to have your body weight evenly distributed over both of the neurodomes, nice and relaxed in your breath, allowing for this pinpoint release. We're staying here and relaxed. After approximately 30 seconds, we're going to move back to position number three. So if you look at my right foot, I'm gonna move it back so that I'm center into the ball of my foot. I'm gonna stand on both of the neurodomes at the same time. And if you look down at your feet, I want you to see and appreciate how you're opening up the ball of the foot. All of your long bones, which are called your metatarsals, are spreading and opening up. Now, as we're here, if you want to increase that pressure, just pitch your body forward a little bit. And I feel a little bit more pressure underneath the ball of my foot. After about 30 seconds here, we're going to go to the outside of our foot. So on my right foot, I'm going to shift it out over onto just the outside of the foot. Now, this is a good release to do one foot at a time. So I'm going to release just my right foot and I'm increasing the pressure by leaning my body weight to the outside of my right foot. Still relaxing into the digits, relaxing the lower leg, hanging out here for about 30 seconds. And then we're going to switch and we're going to go over to the left foot. So again, the placement is going to be on the outside of that left foot. Still keep good, strong posture allowing the muscles underneath your feet to relax and relaxing that breath. After we're here, I'm gonna have you go back to your right side. And this time we're going to go to the inside of the foot. So now I'm placed so that half of my right foot is on the neuro dome. To increase the pressure, I'm just gonna lean my body weight slightly towards the inside or what's called medial. Hanging out here relaxed, allowing for that pinpoint release. And then it's time to switch to our left foot. I'm putting the left foot halfway onto the neurodome, allowing that pressure. I'm then just dropping my body weight towards my midline towards the inside, allowing that foot to release. Now, as we're doing this release on the left foot, I want to share with you that the muscle that you're releasing right now is one of the most important muscles that actually controls your arch. So when we stand a lot, this muscle in particular can start to get overworked and fatigued. After we finish this position, we're going to carefully step off of both of the neurodomes and we're going to grab the black rad micro. Move the domes over to the side and you're gonna place the rad micro onto the floor. We're now going to start with the right foot and we're going to repeat those five positions. 
My right heel is going to go on to the Rad Micro. I'm gonna show you the placement so you can see where it's placed on my foot into position number one. And then I'm gonna stay nice and relaxed. This is a great way to reconnect to our foundation at the start of the day or at the end of the day. After we're here, we're gonna move our foot back so that we are into the center of our arch. And relax. If this is too much pressure, you can always do this seated as well. After 30 seconds here, we're gonna move to the front of the foot. Now, for anyone who's ever experienced neuroma pain, using the Rad Micro, especially in position number three, where we are right now, is great to open up those met heads and release the small muscles that can sometimes pinch those nerve bundles. We're now going to move over to the outside of the foot. Be careful with this one. This one I definitely feel on my right side. And we're going to find that and just relax. Now, finding the perfect amount of pressure when you do trigger point release or myofascial release is that you do want to feel a sensation. You do want to feel right on the edge of this is painful to, oh my goodness, I can't stand it. You're right on that edge. If you are totally comfortable and you're not feeling a little bit of a stimulation, then you need to put more pressure underneath your foot. Okay, we're gonna go to position number five on the right foot. And I'm gonna find, you can kind of move that foot a little bit to find the spot underneath your medial arch. Maybe you need to foot, move your foot a little bit forward or a little bit back, that's okay. Find the place that is nice and sensitive for you, that perfect balance of sensitive versus painful. And again, we're hanging out here. And release. And let's go to our left foot. So we're going to move the Rad Micro over. I'm back to position number one. And I'm hanging out here. Now as we hang out here, let's say you might have plantar fasciitis. If you have an activated plantar fasciitis that is talking to you, I want you to be very careful with position number one. We don't want to go right on the hot spot and put tons of pressure. We actually want to focus a little bit more on the other points of release. So let's go to position number two. Into the center of our arch. And release. Nice strong posture as you're doing this. If you have those Naboso splays on, that is excellent. Keep those toes spread keep them contacting the ground and start to acknowledge the Naboso texture that is under your feet. Just pay attention and feel it. Let's go to position number three. Move your foot back. Now we're into the ball of the foot. This is our neuroma spot, right? This is how we open up our feet. For anyone that might wear tight shoes, this is where we want to spread the foot. I love this spot, number three. And release again. Let's go to position number four. On to the outside. This one gets me every time, that number four, right? Nice, important, small muscles on number four. Again, standing tall, nice and relaxed. Why I love these release techniques is that you are always in control of the pressure. If you need a little bit more, you lean your body weight. If you want to back off, you totally back off. You are always in control. Let's go to position number five, underneath that medial arch. Remember, you get to move your foot a little bit forward or a little bit back to find the most sensitive place for you. I found my place. And exhaling. Perfect. What we're going to do now is we're going to grab that rad micro. We're going to put it back into the ball. 
We're going to close that bad boy up. And now we're going to release the front of our shin and the back of the leg. To release the back of the leg, if you have a yoga block, I would grab that yoga block. If you don't, you could use maybe a shoe box or something that you could use to just prop that leg up a little bit. So now the neural ball is closed. You're going to place it underneath your calf. And the calf placement that I want you to do is, this is kind of the teardrop side of your calf muscle. I want you to go a little bit lower. That position is actually going to be your soleus muscle. We're gonna stand nice and strong in our alignment. You're gonna take your opposite foot and cross it over where the neural ball is. So now by adding the leg on top of the neural ball, I can increase the pressure and the release. If I wanna get a little bit more pressure, I just push my top leg down on top of my other leg and the neural ball. Wanna get a little bit more release? I'm gonna to start to flex my right leg and then I'm gonna point or plant or flex. So now I'm point or flexing and pointing again. Perfect. We're gonna dorsiflex and point. Let's do this two more times. And exhale as you plant or flex the ankle. One more. Dorsiflex up and plant or flex down. Perfect. I'm going to take my left leg off, and if you can see what I'm doing to my right leg, I'm gonna rotate in. So I'm rotating on that same place, I'm hitting a different angle of my soleus muscle. My left leg comes up and across again, and it's gonna hang out here, just like before. I'm gonna push down with my left ankle if I want more pressure. Just like before, you're going to dorsiflex your ankle, careful because it moves a little under the ball, and plantar flex. Dorsiflex and plantar flex. Every time you plantar flex, I want you to exhale. So this is gonna be your exhalation. Exhale, point as hard as you can. Get some movement in those muscle fibers. And then plantar flex. Let's do two more and exhale and inhale last time and plantar flex point 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 and beautiful take your left ankle off now watch my right leg i'm going to rotate all the way out don't roll off your block i'm in this position i'm going to put the ankle on top again right if you need to reposition your ball or your body weight, please do so, right? Make sure you have that right position. So now we're a little bit on the outside of our soleus. Same thing again, dorsiflex and plantar flex. Be careful with the movement, okay? And plantar flex, great job. Lift and point, dorsiflex, Point. Let's do two more again. And exhale, last time. And exhale, great job. Left ankle comes off. We are going to our left side, so move your body over, move the block, place that ball back on top of the block and find your first position on your left side. If you just wanna be here, you absolutely can, okay? Now what I do wanna emphasize is that what we're doing is pinpoint pressure. We're not rolling out our tissue, okay? Start to flex and point that ankle again, okay? Remembering to breathe. Now, why I like to do pinpoint pressure, or this is actually called a pin and stretch that we're doing right now, is because this actually gives a better release to the tissue. Two more, please. Point, point, point. Last one and point. Exhale, great job. Right leg comes off, roll to the inside and then your right ankle goes on top, push down. Ooh, this one is always so much more sensitive on me. Holding here, beautiful. And then start the ankle movements. Now, oftentimes when we roll our tissue, right? 
Rolling actually doesn't give as good of a release as we would like. It actually can cause guarding in the muscles. So every time you get a sensitive position, you actually create a guarding response. So sometimes it can actually make your muscles tighter. Let's do two more. Inhale and exhale, plantar flex. One more time. And exhale, point, 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 and beautiful. Right ankle comes off. Roll to the outside, last position. Reposition your body if you need. Ball goes on top. Here we go, hold that pressure. And then gently start to flex and point. Great. Now these release techniques that I'm showing you, I'd love if you could do this every single day. This is easy enough to do when you're relaxing at the end of the day, you're watching TV, the foot release that we did earlier, sneak that in when you first wake up in the morning. Great, let's do two more. Big inhale and exhale. Last time and exhale. Great job, right ankle comes down. You're gonna grab that neural ball, move the block to the side and we are going to sit in a position that we're here. So I'm taking the ball, it's in the palm of my hand and I'm just gonna start to roll. So I'm rolling, right? Not rolling, I'm round circular movements. And by doing this, I can find, I just found, a sensitive place that is underneath the side of my leg and my calf. So I'm working all the way down, okay, release, and I'm working my way back up. Okay, this is a great way to just say hello to these muscles. Okay. I have pants on, so there's a fabric that's between me and the neural ball. But because of this texture, if you want to do this on your bare skin, it's a great way to wake up those nerves as well. Excellent. Great. Let's go to the other side. Position this way. I'm just going to start to roll and release. You just want to do a couple seconds down and a couple seconds back up. Okay, if you get shin splints, this is a great release that you wanna do. If you start to get tightness in your IT band, you wanna do this release as well. So just do a couple times down and a couple times back up. Again, if you find any sensitive point, you just hold it there, work it in, or you could hold on that sensitive place and just push straight down and hold. Hold there for 30 seconds if you find it's a sensitive point and not. We're gonna hold there for 30 seconds and then you're going to release. Now, that concludes the part of the foot release. To get into the hand release, we are going to go back to the dome position. So if you can split it open, if you need to stand up and push your heel on it again, you absolutely can. So I'm gonna take you standing up set the neural ball down come on top and you're going to push straight down open up that neural ball again taking out the rad micro setting it to the side and let's start to release our hands let's grab those domes we're going to go exactly like with our foot same five positions let's start with the heel of our hand now you can see that I'm in a kneeling position. If this is not friendly to you, that's okay. What I want you to do is then to find a, a chair or a table, and then you can lean forward on the table. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to be staying on the mind body mat and I'm gonna be in a kneeling position. So I am here. I'm at the heel of my hand and I'm leaning my body weight into it. My body weight is what gives the greater release. So again, this is where you get to control it. If this is not comfortable to you, then you can come all the way up onto your hands and knees. This will actually add more pressure. I feel a lot of pressure, okay? After this position for 30 seconds, we're gonna go into the center of what would be the arch of your hand. And I'm here. Now, our hand is much more sensory sensitive than our feet, which means that if you feel a lot of stimulation with the nervoso texture in this release, just back off, back off a little bit, okay? We're always in control. 
we're gonna go to our ball of our hand. So if you can appreciate, look at this. Look at this beautiful stretch I get on my wrist as well. That's great. Drop the heel of your wrist down, okay? Dropping the heel of my wrist down to get that stretch, right? I'm not up like this. This is not me. I'm dropping the heel of my hand and I'm pitching my body forward. This feels great, okay? Let's go to the outside of our hand. Same muscles as on our feet. Lots of muscles in our hands. We use our hands and feet so much throughout our day. Texting, walking, right? All that repetitive movement. Great, and then let's go to number five. Number five is gonna be your thumb, your thenar eminence. That feels great. That's actually the strongest muscle in your hand. We're gonna repeat that same thing. You knew it was coming, right? With that rad micro, now be careful with this because it is a little bit more pinpoint. If you want to grab your block and set it on top just to keep you a little bit more upright, you absolutely can. I'm in position one, pressure's down. It feels oh so good. Do you want to add more pressure? Take the other hand and bring it on top. It's going to add that added pressure. Number three, just going to move back a little bit. Don't want to come off of the block. Okay, so I'm here. And then over to number four. Oh yes, right? Can you see that ball position? Give a little bit more pressure there. Let's go to our right thenar eminence. Thumb, our thumb, right? Do that release. Now, as I take you through this, if you want to hang out on a spot longer, I invite you to do that. You don't have to go at the pace that I am. Stay on a spot that you need a little bit more attention. That is totally fine. And then you can catch up when you're ready. I'm gonna go to my left hand, same position number one. Just adding a little bit of that extra pressure with my other hand. And then moving into position two. Relaxing. And then position number three. If you want to get in between those metatarsals, please do so, right? If you want to have a three, a, B, C, you totally can and get in between each of those metatarsals. Again, I invite you to do that. I'm moving to position number four right now. Oh yeah, I'm gonna move it back a little bit. Oh, that feels so great. And then finally, thumb, left hand, position number five. This is anyone who has carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome actually affects the thenar eminence, so the thumb, that huge muscle. That's where we oftentimes start to get stressed through the carpal tunnel. Great, and then we're gonna lift and release. Okay, so we're almost done. We've got one last release for our forearms. I'm gonna put the, the rad micro back inside the ball. I like to do that every time I close this ball because you could lose that rad micro. So it's back inside the neural ball. And what I'm gonna do now, similar to the legs, is I'm here. I'm going to roll. Now you could roll like this if you would like. I like to actually go like this. So do you see how I'm doing like a cross friction? Yeah, so I'm just gonna cross friction my forearm all the way down and right here. So this is called your brachial radialis. This rotates, it does this movement. So when you bend your elbow and rotate, that muscle is what is engaged. So we get a lot of stress to that guy. Anytime you pick up suitcases, your workout, anything that you do. Yeah, this feels great. 
tennis elbow, right? Tennis elbow, like carpal tunnel. It's just a stickiness in the nerves. So we wanna kind of release. I'm gonna do this all the way down, all the way down my forearm. Great. After a couple minutes on that right side, we're gonna switch, cross friction that other side, right? So cross friction, this feels great, right? How often do people actually release their forearms? Not that often, right? But imagine all the muscles of your forearm and the work that they do every single day. The muscles of your forearm are what actually move these fingers. All your texting is actually forearm work, not hand work, it's forearm work. Nice, just a couple more moments there. Beautiful. Great. And then we're gonna move the block to the side, the neural ball, and I'm gonna have you join me in a lotus position. So we're here. Last quick little stretch. We're gonna sit nice and tall. If this is not friendly to you and you need to have your legs a little bit more open like this, totally can. If you wanna be seated in a chair and do this, you absolutely can. I'm gonna go into this lotus. I'm gonna bring my hands to either side. I'm sitting nice and tall. Okay, head is gonna start straight across and I'm dropping my shoulders. Do you see how I'm trying to make my neck longer by dropping my shoulders down? My fingers are spreading nice and wide and I can feel the nervoso texture under my fingers. I'm just holding here. Perfect, now what I want you to do is to bring your right ear to your right shoulder gently, please. Slow movements always. And as my right ear is to my right shoulder, I'm gonna try to drop my left shoulder a little bit more. Keep your fingers spread. And then inhale to the center, relax. Other side, left ear, left shoulder. Drop the right shoulder a little bit more. Spread your fingers wide, open up your hand. And then go gently release. Bring your shoulders all the way up to your ears. And then all the way down. Let's do that again. All the way up, lift, lift, lift. And release one more time. Tight, tight, tight. And release. Good job, you guys. Thank you so much. And please remember to do this hand and foot release every single day. Take care. If you want to learn more great workouts, please head to naboso.com. Also check out our full product line.